name is Nelly Bakali and I'll continue talking about the history of Sarawak, formation of Sarawak. In 1838, James Brooke, an adventurer, landed in Kuching, then known as Sarawak. When Brooke stepped in with the assistance of troops from Britain, China's grandeur to keep peace and restore the ruler to his throne, the Sultan was so grateful that he gave him Sarawak as a reward. In 1841, he was proclaimed the Raja, the first white Raja. Some of the interesting facts about Sarawak. Sir James Brooke was the first white Raja of Sarawak, and after World War II, the last white Raja, Charles Viner Brooke, ceded Sarawak to Britain, and in 1946, it became a British crown colony. Hello, I'm Sanar, and I'm going to talk about a few historical aspects of Sarawak. So, how Sarawak was founded? In the 16th century, Sarawak came under the influence of the Brunei Empire. From 1841 to 1946, Sarawak was ruled by the White Rajas. Lastly, on the history of Sarawak, how Sarawak became part of Malaysia. On 23 October 1962, five political parties in Sarawak formed a united front that supported the formation of Malaysia. Sarawak was officially granted self-government on 22 July 1963 and became federated with Malaya, North Borneo, now Sabah and Singapore to form a federation named Malaysia on 16 September 1963. Hi, my name is Miyaba and today I will be telling you about the geography of Sarawak, including its divisions and districts, as well as its flora and fauna. Sarawak is located north of the equator and 600 kilometers from the peninsula Malaysia. It stretches 800 kilometers along the northwest coast of the island Borneo and is bordered by Sabah, Brunei, and Kalimantan. It's the largest of Malaysia's 13 states with an area almost equivalent to that of Peninsula Malaysia. Uh, Sarawak is separated into 12 administrative divisions, each having their own districts. A district is also sometimes split into sub-districts. Sarawak has an extremely biodiverse environment and is home to a plethora of exotic wildlife from snakes that fly, monitor lizards and crocodiles, to a variety of bird species and dolphins. Animals such as the orangutan, proboscis monkey, rhinoceros hornbill, raja rick butterfly, silk leaf monkey, and cloud leopard all reside within Sarawak. Sarawak's rainforests are almost equivalent to the size of Austria and it is home to the world's largest flower, the Rafflesia, that can grow to the size of a table. Hi, my name is Esme. Today I will be telling you about the etymology and flag of Sarawak. The state's name is derived from the Sarawak Malay word, Sarawak, which signifies antimony according to popular belief. A popular alternative interpretation is that a contraction of Panjeran, Huda Hashim's Sultan of Brunei, Four Malay words, Saya, Sera, Pada, Awak. I surrender it to you when he ceded Sarawak to James Brooke. Sarawak is known as the land of hornbills, Bumi, Kenya, Lang. The Dayak people consider these birds to be central cultural sim symbols as they reflect the spiritual god. It is also thought that seeing a hornbill flying over a house will bring good luck to the neighborhood. Minoceros hornbill serving as the state's bird. Sarawak's flag is based on the banner of white Raja Raj of Sarawak and incorporates the yellow of Southeast Asian monarchy. A similar yellow and di diagonal black appear in Brunei's flag. However, Brunei's yellow is a brighter color. Hello, my name is Evza Damnath and today I want to talk about the traditional cuisines of Sarawak. First of all, I want to talk about Manok Pansu. So it originates from the Iban ethnicity. So initially this dish was prepared uh, during celebration days, especially the Gawai Dayak. The Gawai Dayak is a celebration for the end of harvesting. The second dish that I'm going to talk about is the raw fish salad that is commonly known as umai. So umai is basically the ceviche of Sarawak. Umai is quite unique in Sarawak especially in the regions of Muka and Dala, where a large majority of the Melanau populations live. This is also where the dish umai originated from. Umai was originally a 
dish or a food of convenience for the Milanao fishermen. Third, I want to talk about Nuba Laya. Nuba Laya is another popular traditional dish of Sarawak. It is a leaf wrapped food in Sarawak. This is basically mashed rice wrapped in banana leaves and it, this originates from the Kelabit who are the indigenous Dayaks of the Baroi Highland. And I will pass it on to my teammate Marie to explain more. Hi, I'm Mary, and I'm also going to be discussing about the traditional cuisines in Sarawak. Along with the Manuk Pansu, Nubalaya, and Umay, Sarawak also has a dish called Sarawak Laksa. It's actually very interesting because in the 1940s, a Cantonese man named Golik Pek moved to Kuching. Soon, he started earning a living by selling a simple noodle broth on a street cart that would later become the fame Sarawak Laksa. For our last dish, we have the Sarawakian food called Kwechap, which is said to be a Malaysian favorite. The origins of this dish is said to come from the Ming Dynasty, and due to the vast culture in different areas of China, Kwechap is prepared differently depending on where you go. Hello, my name is Jamsa, and I'm going to be talking about tourist attractions in Sarawak. Sarawak is a state of Malaysia that is massively covered in rainforests. It is an ideal destination for anyone who is into adventurous activities and exploring. The capital city of Sarawak is Kuching, meaning cat in Malay language. And Kuching is a city that stands out in every aspect. So anyone who is looking to explore the deep rainforests of Sarawak, kayaking in the Panama region of Kuching is possibly the best choice. As the upside down house is a hidden gem and only one of its kind built in Sarawak. It's a fun, family-friendly place designed to make sure you have an unbelievable mind-blowing experience. Make sure to take loads of pictures. Jalan Panduban. Jalan Panduban is a Chinatown built in the 1920s. All buildings are nicely decorated and exhibits alluring architectural details. The place is built up with China shop houses, restaurants, and handicraft shops. National parks provide a safe home for native plants and animals. It helps keep the air and water clean while providing us places to enjoy. The Lambert Hills National Park is probably the world's most complex and diverse forest ecosystem. This provides a home for 237 species of flying squirrels, wild pigs, gibbons, and many more. The Gunung Mulu National Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that encompasses caves and karst formations in a mountainous equatorial rainforest setting. The park is famous for its caves and the expeditions that have been mounted to explore them and their surrounding rainforest, and the national park is named after Mount Mulu, the second highest mountain in Sarawak. Thank you. The overall knowledge we gained about Sarawak and everything it has to offer was an exhilarating experience, and we are glad to have attempted this project as a group. If anyone among us ever wanted to visit Sarawak before, that interest has been amplified tenfold, and we share the same craving for Manuk Pansu and look forward to sharing stories about our experiences when we do have the pleasure to visit Sarawak. Even the research we did on this breathtaking place was a pleasurable experience and we would share random videos on our group calls and discuss where we would imagine ourselves taking a picture when we do end up going to Sarawak. The time zones were a struggle, but we learned to adapt as a team. And it helped that everyone knew that due to the pandemic, we had to adjust to the new normal. If we ever find ourselves in Malaysia, after the pandemic is over, we know that we will be happy to experience everything we have learned and loved talking about in this project together.